is Diagnosis Glaucoma with your hosts, Dr. Mona Colleen and Dr. Harry Quigley. Hello, everyone. We're very happy to announce that we have a special guest on our program today, Dr. Elise McLumphy. Elise, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? I'm really delighted to be here today, so thank you so much for having me. I'm an assistant professor at the Wilmer Eye Institute in the Glaucoma Center of Excellence. I see patients at three different locations in Wilmer. I also work in clinical research, and one of the major areas of interest I have is variation in intraocular pressure and how this plays a role in glaucoma disease worsening. And that brings us to the topic of our episode today. We are going to be talking about your work in the eye care tonometer. So, Elise, what is the eye care? So, the eye care is a type of tonometer, which is a, an instrument that measures the intraocular pressure of the eye. Typically, when you go to see your glaucoma provider, they'll measure your pressure using the microscope that you set out with the little blue light, and that's called a Goldman applination tonometer. This requires a relatively cooperative patient, and it also requires that the cornea receive some anesthesia in that little form of the yellow eye drop that you get. And this is how many glaucoma providers measure the pressure. There is a newer device called the eye care home tonometer, which is a type of rebound tonometer. And it has a little magnetized probe that bounces off the cornea to measure the intraocular pressure. And this doesn't require any topical anesthesia, which is really nice for those who are, you know, intolerant of drops or in children even who don't really aren't keen on receiving eye drops. Oh, yeah. I think it's traumatizing, not just for the patient, but for the doctor and the technicians working with pediatric patients to try to check intraocular pressure. Um, And then some people, some patients that we see really can't tolerate the anesthetic eye drop or getting really close to the Goldman applination tonometer. So yeah, I hear you on that. And so with the eye care and the home device, so you kind of talked about how they work. How are they different from other devices that check the eye pressure? So the main difference is in the requirement of topical anesthesia, which the eye care doesn't require. Another thing that sets it apart is that it's not as impacted by the shape or the cornea. Sometimes in our current methods of measuring the pressure, if a patient has a history of a corneal disease or corneal surgery, the applination tonometer is not as reliable at getting a pressure. And so the eye care is not as dependent on this. That's one factor that sets it apart from our current method of measuring pressure. I was just actually about to ask you just about that, how accurate is compared to other means of checking eye pressure? Yeah, that's a great question. So they have done several studies on looking at this and comparing the eye care to the standard, which is the Goldman applination tonometry. And what they have found is that they're pretty similar. About 95% of patients will fall within about 4 to 5 millimeters of mercury difference between the Goldman, which is that little blue light, and the eye care tonometer. That's pretty good. Only about less than 2% of patients will have a difference that's greater than 7, which is a pretty big difference. Are there some patients where you feel like this is not a good option? I think it's a pretty good option as a supplement to gaining you know, as much information as we can. I, I don't think there are many patients where it's not a great option. I think if you know that there's a big difference between the two measurements, then maybe it's not the best. So someone who's had a laser or a surgery for glaucoma can use this just like someone who hasn't had those? That's correct, yeah. And how easy is it to use? It's very easy to use. And in fact, I would say that it's much more user-friendly than the Goldman applination. It doesn't require as much expertise or precision to apply this type of instrument compared to the Goldman. And in fact, that leads me into the home eye care device, which is a device that this company has made to allow patients to actually measure their own pressure using this technology. So people can actually buy or rent one of these and check their eye pressure at home on their own? They can. So they have to buy it through an ophthalmologist, a participating ophthalmologist, or they can rent the device. And some of the practices have a library of devices that they'll rent out to patients. And yes, they can actually measure their own pressure in their home setting. You know, it doesn't require two people, just one person, and they can measure their pressure. Can family members or friends also learn how to 
do this for the patient? Yes, of course. If they had a family member or a friend available, they could use the standard eye care device rebound tonometer, or they could also help with the eye care home device. Now, I know that at Hopkins, we both rent and sell the device. I've also heard of another website, www.myeyes.net, where you can also, again, rent or purchase this device. At least do you know of any other places patients can go? I'm not familiar with any other places that patients can go. I think that they have to, most of the time, buy it under a medical provider. And do you know if this is covered by insurance, or do most people pay out of pocket? Unfortunately, most people pay out of pocket. It's not covered by insurance at this time. Now, I'm not sure, I can't speak to some of the healthcare spending plans. That may be something that patients could have covered by their healthcare spending plan, but That's not something I'm totally familiar with. And Elise, why do you think that it's important for patients to monitor their eye pressure from home? So I don't necessarily think all patients need to monitor their eye pressure from home. And this may even cause some patients anxiety. But I think there are situations where monitoring the eye pressure at home could be beneficial. And this might lie in patients who are worsening on their visual field testing or worsening from a glaucoma standpoint, yet every time they go into the eye clinic, their pressure may be measuring within an acceptable range. These types of patients we have a particular interest in because we would like to know if something is going on outside of the clinic setting that could be causing their glaucoma to worsen. And what we'd be typically looking for is an out-of-office intraocular pressure spike. Now, In other patients who may not have access to care or in patients in certain post-op settings or if the practitioner is hoping to monitor something specifically, those patients may be great candidates for the eye care home tonometer. But I don't think that every patient needs this technology. I think during the pandemic, the use of the eye care really became useful. There were fewer patients that could come in for visits. And there was a lot of concern about, or I would say unknowns about infection risks. So we were generally checking eye pressure with the, with the eye care in the office and also renting these or selling these to patients so that they didn't have to come into the office. So that was one of the nice things that I found about the eye care. Yes, definitely. Are there any patients you've actually found who were progressing at home? Yeah, so as you know, at Wilmer, we rent them to patients, and we have found some very interesting things. There have been a handful of patients who we see in the clinic who measure with the pressure that is meeting our target set by the practitioner, yet they seem to be worsening on their visual fields despite these low pressures. And so when we've sent them home with this device, we have found in a small number of patients where there was out-of-office spiking of the eye pressure that we would not have to detected in the eye clinic. And that was an indication that these patients needed more aggressive treatment in the form of either more eye drops, laser, or surgery. And so it did have a real impact for those people. And then other patients, it really just confirms what we find, that the pressure may be well controlled. And then we look into other causes of why their visual field may be worsening. What kind of research are you doing with the eye care right now? And what have you learned from that? So as a segue of what I was just speaking about, we've looked back at all the patients that we rented the device to to see if there were any factors that predicted out-of-office eye pressure spikes. And we have found that there was an association in males, actually. It was a small association that males may be more likely to have out-of-office IOP spike. That needs further exploration because it was a retrospective study. Also, absence of filtering surgery, so surgery that you get for glaucoma, patients who had a history of of a, say, trabeculectomy surgery were much less likely to have an eye pressure spike outside of the clinic or higher than what the clinic was measuring. And so that was something we learned from our retrospective study. And what we're doing now is prospective work. We're looking at patients who have many visual fields available and lots of data over time, and we're having them take the eye care home and rent it for a week, and we're looking at what their pressure is doing and sort of trying to relate that to their visual fields and see if we can find an association between what the pressure does you know, throughout the day and night and how their visual fields are either you know, stable or are they progressing. And that will give us a lot of information and insight. The comments you just made make me want to recommend trabeculectomy more often to patients. Elise, if listeners want to support your research, how can they do that? 
So they can get in touch with the Wilmer Eye Institute and my development officer, Daniela Freed, who can help direct them to our research funds and efforts. And we'd be really thankful for that. And for all the listeners, Daniela Freed's contact information is on the Diagnosis Glaucoma website. Elise, I think the work you're doing is really fantastic. Do you have any last few comments? I just want to thank you for having me. I think this is really exciting. Your podcast is really awesome, and I'm glad that you and Dr. Quigley are able to do this for your patients. Thank you so much, and thank you for being one of our guests on this program. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Kleen. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, your mom says take your drops. 